What's up, Martin? What's up, baby? Dude. And we're back. And Martin, we're back. The SDI is back. Yo, the SDI is back, baby. Round two. Round two. What do we got going on? That's not always a good thing. In this when case, it's a great when thing. When they tell you the SDI is back. The SDI is back, <laughs> Martin. So, um, in the last video, did we talk about suspension upgrades on this thing? No, nah, the last video we did was basically all the engine stuff okay. on this car. So, um, this go round is round number two. We're going full blown suspension upgrades. We're also powder coating stuff in the engine bay, make it look pretty. Uh, we're pretty much like finishing it up. I mean, there might be a round three as far as like doing maybe some possible transmission work, but I'll give you guys a rundown. We got Olin's. Is that how you say it? I've never heard of it. You know, bro, this thing comes factory. Okay, factory on Lamborghinis. Oh, yeah? All right, factory. Like, look at the Aventador. Hold on. All right. But, so we have uh, Lamborghini struts going in this thing. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah, These look like good, that. too. They do, yeah. I'm, I'm building them right now because I've actually never done a set um, of these. Um, these are going in the front. These are going in the rear. We also Cross have, rears. yeah, we also have a bunch of Cusco goodies. Oh, goodies nice. over there. Look at all we this have, stuff. Yeah, we have braces, lower control arms. Yeah. We have the upper strut brace yep. there. So is he going kind of with like a blue yellow theme, or is it? What, what do we got going on for the? I don't. Coloring? I don't think it's really a, a theme that we're going for. It's more just like high quality parts. Nice. Um, and it just happens to be cool colors. Blue, yeah, blue and gold <laughs> and yellow. Yeah, and it actually does look good. It does. Um, it does look really good. Yesterday, I did the Super Pro uh, front lower control arms. Okay. Because this car is making so much power that the wheels are actually yanking on the front suspension. And it's actually, it actually tore apart the lower control arms. But Let's check out the new ones you put in. Yeah. Oh, yeah, huh? Yeah. These are the new ones. Uh, upgraded bushing. Okay. New bushing. And you can't really see it in there. Let me see if I can... Let me see if I can get my screwdriver in there. Looks good, Martin. Yeah. There's a billow ball bushing in there. Oh, I saw it. Where yeah, you, you saw it, you saw it a little bit yep. there? Yeah. Yep. Look so, that thing. what that allows, it allows the control arm to really just stay in place. Okay? We are coupling that with the previous mounted white line uh, ball joints. Okay. We are also doing white line tie rod ends. Nice. Uh, we are upgrading the front sway bar. This is a. This was put on before, like a long time ago. This is a 22 millimeter uh, white line sway bar. We're going with a 24 millimeter with upgraded sway bar links. Cool. Um, there was a lot of flex in the front suspension, where actually, if you take a look at his front bumper here, the front tire was going forward so much it actually started rubbing on the bumper here oh yeah huh? and obviously it tore apart the front fender liner so there was that much play in there yeah from actually, the power let's, let's let's take a look at the control hey bryce what's up owner bryce see that <laughs> bryce looks like he's having a good life crisis so if you look in here, you can see the bushing is all cracked. See right there? Oh, yeah, huh? Okay, and obviously right now it's in its resting position, but if yep. you flex it, like the Bush. suspension would. Wow. Yeah. So So it just completely tore that apart. Yeah. And then the backside's even worse right here. You have more cracks right here. So, yeah, the, the, the whole thing is done. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, just, yeah. Thanks, Martin. Wait, one more. What do we got? Wait, we have more. Check these out. Look at these bags. Look at the girth. Look those at are the freshies, bro. Yeah, so these those are like their uh, drive shaft shop stage five, they're called. They're capable of like 800 wheel. Which is what um, we're pushing here. Which is right. Um, you know, so... The next upgrade from this would be the hub setup, but the hub setup is literally like, I think the front is like 
$2,500 and the rear is like $3,000. So uh, these should hold up no problem. We also have a one piece uh, carbon fiber drive, drive shaft going in uh, for the rear. Um, because he, he drives this thing very fast. He blew out the tranny seal, which we're gonna fix that also. Uh, I'm guessing that's what the fluid is. Yeah, that's what all that is. <laughs> if you actually take a look up here, you can see it. Oh boy. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So so what happens is when you overspeed these transmissions, you know, all the pressure inside the transmission crank, you know, crankcase tends to blow out fluid out of whatever seal let's go first. So in this case, with a little bit of vibration coming from the rear drive shaft, you know, it blow. blow. That, yeah. So we're gonna get a new seal. We're gonna get a, the one piece. Oh, let me show you the one piece. Yeah, let's check it out. Woo! Oh, yeah. Alright. It's nice. Look at this thing. It's nice. So, so this is balanced for high speed. It's also very strong. It's also very lightweight. It can take the impact of a launch. Um, and obviously it can take all the torque and power that the car's putting down. Right. So this would definitely help with that by dri yeah, driveline vibration. Okay. And uh, hopefully he doesn't blow out the seal again. Uh, now, even though, you know, it's upgraded and stuff, you could still blow the seal. Yeah, because at that point, what he's running into the issue is not so much like the power that he's putting down, is the speed that he's doing. Okay. Because it is a built motor, his RPMs, uh, you know, stock are 6,500. We're going all the way to like 8,500 now. So, um, yeah, that's that's quite a bit of range in the RPM. So, the transmission for this year, top speed is like 155, but we've confirmed that he's gone well over that. A bunch of times so you know well it's held up for good it's, it's, yeah it's held up really well too so and the other thing that's holding up pretty good is our the michelin pilot 4s so but we'll see now because now technically he can just launch and do donuts and yeah that's crazy you know, hopefully he doesn't break anything else but yeah <laughs> thanks martin yeah <laughs>
What's up, Martin? What's up, baby? Happy Monday. Happy Monday, man. Yeah. How's how's the soupy going? It's cold today. <laughs> it's cold, it's bro. Cold. We got the jeans back on. Jeans, got the t-shirt back on. It's cold. <laughs> um, soupy is great. Um, uh, suspension work is all done. Cool. Uh, the bracing is all done. Uh, so this chassis just became very very stiff. Uh, I can't wait to actually get it to the alignment shop, give it right. a good alignment, and actually get it on the road and make sure that it's tight. So also, we are putting it back on the dyno uh, on Friday. Cool. Given that all the other parts get in on time. So, um, yeah, just a little retune. The car's got almost 9,000 miles. Um, since the build, right? Since the build, yeah. So uh, we fixed a uh, transmission issue we had with it. Um, yeah, but check it out. Yeah, let's check it out. See what we got. So we got upgraded white line 24 millimeter sway bars. Okay. With the complementing sway bar links. We have uh, Super Pro's uh, control arms with the billow ball and bushing upgrades back here and in the front here. Okay. We have all this beautiful Cusco bracing. Looks insane under here. <laughs> Coming back here. Yeah. Here. Can't Here's, forget the carbon drive shaft. Yeah, we, got, <laughs> we got the carbon drive shaft, one piece, okay, fully balanced. So the problem that he was having was that uh, because the car is really fast, he was down in Mexico doing like 170 miles an hour <laughs> racing McLarens. And what happened was essentially he oversped the transmission, causing too much case pressure inside the transmission. So what that does, the breather inside the transmission is not high flow enough to let the pressure relieve. So he pushed out the rear seal here. So all this nastiness you see here and it's all, all the oil, it's all from the transmission seal that blew out the back. That's crazy. Um, also, the factory drive shaft is good, but it's not really balanced for high speed or all the power that this one's making. That's why we upgraded it. So now that we have a properly balanced shaft um i mean he might still have that issue because <laughs> he's gonna overspeed the training anyways but um yeah that's a work in progress that's probably cool. gonna be a whole other video on the training alone but so he so he's got the upgraded uh joint here it's a spicer joint so we had to drill out the factory hub here okay. to accommodate for the stronger uh and bigger bolts that attach the rear drive shaft to the to the uh, rear diff uh, hub here. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, now going to the back, we yeah. have a, a hidden brace here. Okay, that goes from here all the way to here. Okay. Um, we have toe arm control upgrade. We have cast caster upgrade right here. For okay. The ladder bar. We have camber control here. We have our beautiful Olins. Yeah, these look really nice. Dual flow valve. Okay. Or DFV. <laughs> Fire. Down. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we have another Cusco brace here. Okay. That's for the subframe. Okay. And then we have our, our rear sway bar white line upgrade brace here. This this sway bar is a little bit old. He's had it on there for a while, but that is a 20 millimeter white line upgraded sway bar. And obviously cool. we had to go with the white line. Uh, upgraded sway bar links so yeah it's a lot of work uh, but the car should feel a lot better now right um we are doing a bunch of other stuff uh including some engine work we're putting clear timing covers in there uh the intake manifold after it comes back from the powder coating that go on piping's coated um we also have Cusco front uh strut mount brace and rear strut mount brace so that also looks really nice yeah i'll show you sweet one eternity later and now we're up top now we're up top yeah so as you can see there's a bunch of stuff missing here it's all down at the powder coating but going back to the cusco this is our cusco front strut brace okay it was the only one that i could find that gave me the clearance here to fit that the IAG AOS, the big intake with the big piping. Right. Is the one that really is the only one that really tucks away pretty nice. Um it also kind of complements what we're doing here with the 
you know, the color theme of the car, yep. you know, with the polished aluminum and the blue collars and all that. But let's go to the back. The back got interesting. Check it out. So back here, we have to do some trimming. All these panels. This my, my fan cam by. I think. I think he just likes saying Cusco. Oh. Stop. Yo, Cusco, everything, bro. He just likes it. And we got Cusco. a Cusco. And we got a Cusco, Cusco. Yeah. Did you know Cusco. Cusco makes BMW parts? Really? Yeah, they make braces for BMWs too. Wow. Yeah. Just saying. Huh? So, yeah, so this plastic covers comes off, this comes off, there's some panels underneath that come off. You put in the braces, and then, yeah, you do some nice trim work. Now, I got a question. Hmm. Is this thing going to be so firm that everything's going to be kind of like rattling and shaking on the inside? What do you think? No, it won't be rattling or anything. No, no seriously, because when you put like... <laughs> no, no, it's a serious question, because when you put bracing on, like, it's... It's it's a valid question. It is it actually should be the opposite. It because I know be Nick's dog shape. bone mount in the RS3 was uh Yeah, yeah. No, was quite the be, experience. Yeah, but that's but that's that's like transmission to engine translation to the vehicle. Yeah. You're stiffening the vehicle. This is right, right. So, so what this is gonna do is if you hit the good enough pothole, the whole car is gonna crack in half. <laughs> <laughs> or if you hit a curve going like, you know, very fast, you might actually take that curve on three wheels instead of all four. But yeah, actually, it it is a valid question. Um, the fact that it stiff is stiffened up the chassis yep. as much as we did. Actually, going as far as like road noise and uh, road fear and all that, it should feel more solid. Cool. Especially when you know uh, flexing the chassis of the car. So if you're doing hard turns or going over bumps and stuff like that, everything should be a lot stiffer. So it should handle it much better. Like it should feel more secure versus going around the corner and feeling like the back end flex versus right. the front um everything should be a lot stiffer nice but i'll let you know on the road test yeah we'll do the road <laughs> test <laughs> thanks martin yeah